Jesse Warden here. We're going to talk about events. It's a multi-video series to cover everything there is to know about events. Events constitute two important parts of your application and they serve a third purpose as a messaging framework. So number one is anything that you do to interact with an application, whether it's a game or an app, using a mouse, right, a keyboard, or any kind of touch events, right, from a, a mobile device perspective, as well as things that could potentially occur from specific objects that multiple people or multiple places in your code should care about, right? So that's what events are for, for those two use cases. Something happens, I need to know about it. It could happen a lot of times, many times per second, many times per day, and multiple people need to be able to say, hey, I, I want to hear about that as well, places in your code, right? So if your code, other people's code, libraries you borrow, code your coworker wrote, like it should all be able to hear about those same events. The second thing, things that are not physical, right? Such as networking events or geolocation events, right? This isn't anything I'm interacting with. This just so happens to say, hey, we know that your laptop or mobile device changed location based on our geolocation satellites. We know that you're a different place on Earth, in the country you live in, the state or province, whatever. So those kind of events will be raised at random times, okay? The other ones is web workers. If you're dealing with multiple threads or multiple pieces of code that you are going to do a lot of work, but you don't want them to slow it on your app, you can hear about those kind of things. So events seen is believing, right? So let's do a basic event. Now, we've briefly touched on DOM. I know I keep saying that in every video, but DOM is a huge subject, and as a programmer, I like to stay away. I like to live in my comfortable world of JavaScript and let all the designers and people who like pretty pictures deal with the semantic HTML markup in the CSS, right? I'm a programmer. I like to live in JavaScript. Theoretically, we're supposed to be experts in all of it. So that's where I'm at. I'm in JavaScript, okay? So we're going to show you that. Let's create ourselves a button, right? A button. I like buttons. You like them too. My button. My button. Wherever I go, he's going to click. On my HTML page, I have a button. It's just a web page with a button. It doesn't do anything except show its name, okay? We want to know about when something is clicked. How do we know? How can our code react to that button being clicked? Well, in old school days, you would have something like an event loop. It basically the code would be going, uh, 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 oh, button click. Hey, just let you know. Uh, 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 and it would constantly check to see if all these events were happening, like button clicks and keyboard presses. JavaScript isn't like that. JavaScript's like, uh, can I help you? And you're like, yeah, I'd like to know if uh, somebody clicks on you. That's fine. Just uh, what function would you like me to call? Yeah, this uh, on click method. Okay. Anytime somebody clicks on me, I'll call that method for you and I'll let you know what they clicked on, where they clicked, what was starting the click, things like that. Cool. Thank you very much. That's generally the contract of how events work. So we can set up our JavaScript. We're going to do it wrong first because I like to do things wrong because when you're learning programming, nothing ever goes as planned. And when it doesn't, none of the tutorials tell you why. They give you a little footnote. It's like, well, if this broke, don't worry about this. I like to say, hey, look, here's all the catastrophes that can go wrong because it's going to go wrong in a real-world job scenario anyway. It's important for you to know, hey, uh, why did this happen? Because if you know why it broke, you can fix it. If you fix it, you're made of awesome. And that's what we want. We want people learning to program and being made – awesome. I like being made of awesome. In programming, the way to talk to the DOM to find things in it, in that nest of HTML tags, right? Deep in there. The way to go in there and find something and rip it out so you can play with it in JavaScript is via the get document by ID. So we are going to get a reference to that button, make a variable. My button, man. You can call it whatever you want. I call it my button because that's what I'm calling it. Documents. Documents is your global variable. We've talked about global variables before. Document has all kinds of things. And if you're curious, what, do you, what are all kinds of things, Jesse? I don't understand. Well, go in your console, hit document dot in Chrome. <gasps> Voila! All these lovely constants. You can tell it's a constant by an uppercase underscore, right, separating it. That's kind of a convention people follow. All these methods like adamant listener, dot node, all blah, 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 all these create things. Like the document can do so many things. All these ons, right? Anytime you see the word on, it denotes some form of event. It's kind of a convention, right? On click, on press, on you, those kind of things. So we're going to say, hey, document, inside of you, document represents 
the, the page that you're looking at, the HTML page, right? The document. Because originally the internet was a series of documents and now we're creating apps. My, how things evolve. Go standards. Document git element or XML node. Element, XML node. This little tag thing. They're all synonymous. They all mean the same thing. But not to computer scientists. They get angry. Git element by ID. And it's my button. Now, we got to give it a name if we're going to use element by ID. In this case, ID. So, get element means inside of here somewhere, get an element that has the ID of my button. Oh, look, there it is. So, get element defines it for you. It doesn't matter if you nest it inside of other tags, like div tags, which are kind of like container tags. Or I can nest it, and it doesn't matter. It would still work, right? That's what's so great about this query syntax, right? Like a database query, but it's a for the DOM, okay? So, we got our button. Let's uh, make sure it works. I'm going to log it out. And actually, I'm going to write a lot of consoles today, so we're going to make a shortcut function called log o console.log o. Don't repeat yourself. Make things efficient. Now, a lot of people will yell about overriding built-in functions. Good for them. It's my video. And we're going to log this guy out. My button. Refresh the page, and as you can see, my button is null. Now, why is it null? This is the problem with putting your script tag at the very top of the page. The page loads sequentially. What that means is this entire page actually loads tag by tag certain sections. Certain browsers load it differently, but bottom line is, is that these little chunks of tags will load as the page downloads from the server. So for example, you're not going to be able to see it locally because I'm running from my computer, but if I was running from a web page, you can see the network here. It takes you know, a certain amount of time, in this case one millisecond, ha ha ha. But from the internet, it could take a while. It could take a couple minutes, a couple seconds, couple, even many, many milliseconds. In that time frame, chunks of it could have been downloaded, as well as the CSS and code and other stuff that it referenced, and it can show you some of it, right? That's why web pages kind of stream in, so you can see things while it's loading, right? It gives you something to read or look at while the rest of the page that you may not, you know, scroll down to is loading, right? It's a nice, optimized way of doing things. If you don't know that, then you're wondering why your code broke, okay? So our code, in this case, loads first. It tries to access a button that hasn't loaded yet, okay? The way you guarantee that is you take your code and you put it at the bottom. That way, are you guys done loading because I'm like ready to run? Well, if he's at the bottom, he never has to ask that question. He's ready to go for the most part. If you're doing basic stuff, this will work. As your application gets larger, not so much. So we're going to refresh the page and check out our kids console. And as you can see, oh, look, an HTML button element. Fantastic. So our code works merely by moving it around. The joys of JavaScript. So where you execute validates if it works or not, OK? Cool. So we got our button. Now let's add an event listener for it. The JavaScript way of doing this, I'm going to show you the DOM way and the JavaScript way. The JavaScript way, one more time, Jesse, the what way? The JavaScript way. All this like how Canadians say it better. Click. So add event listener has two parameters, that is, what event would you like to listen for? Because it could implement all kinds of events. Buttons, for example, do on click, on mouse over, on mouse out, on mouse down, on mouse up, and all kinds of other things like keyboard commands and touch commands and blah blah blah. So they made them strings, so they had ultimate flexibility to boot whatever it wants. What's the downside of strings? If you misspell it, nothing will happen. And this happens all the time. <laughs> Right, because JavaScript is a typist language. A lot of people don't use constants with IDEs that provide IntelliSense. Thus, they get lucky, or they hope that JSLint compilers can find this kind of stuff. So, in our case, we're going to say on click, which is our callback function. So, in English, what this means is, hey button, anytime you are clicked on, let this function know or call this function for me, right? It's going to actually invoke it like that. Notice I didn't invoke it myself. I say, no, no, no. Here's the function or phone number I want you to call anytime somebody clicks on me. You get it? So notice I misspelled it. What is it going to do, Jesse? It's not going to work, is it? No, it's not. But I'll show you. Oh, I forgot a semicolon. So refresh the page, click it, and nothing happens, right? Because we misspelled it. This is what's cool about JavaScript. You can mess up and it never tells you. Other languages go, hey, 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 I'm not compiling that. 
Don't you think so, Mr. Program Man? You can't can't do that. JavaScript's like, hey man, if you want to write that kind of code, I'm cool with that, man. A little too chilled out for me. So we're gonna correct it where it says click, and lo and behold, you can see click. So I can do it multiple times. Now a cool feature of some browsers, such as Chrome, is if an event happens multiple times, which they want to do, such as buttons, keyboards, and things like that, they can happen a lot, right? You'll notice that it increments the number. So instead of putting clicked 50 billion times on the page, right, it actually increments it for you. Saying, hey, this event happened 14 times. Just wanted to let you know, okay? So every time I click, that event's going to fire. Cool. So that is basics of events. What if you want to get around this whole, like, you know, code loading thing? Like, I don't want to do it via code. Isn't there a way just to, like, reduce the amount of code? The cool thing about DOM is that DOMs have improved to the points where you can now, wherever they're defined, define those mouse events. So, for example, click. In this case, on click. So on denotes the actual DOM way of doing it, whereas just click denotes the programmatic way. On click the function. Now notice we can't give it a function pointer. We actually have to call it like that, okay? So we're gonna call on click manually rather than feed it a function. So when on click happens, this is effectively a block of JavaScript inside the string. It's not a function, it's whatever you want it to be. You could actually write full functions here. Don't do it like Trey McClure says. So we refresh the page, and as you can see, it's the same thing. It's just another way to actually write the event handlers on the tag itself. Now this will scale to things like, as I hit enter here to format things a bit, we can do on mouse down. So on mouse down, we can also do that as well. That's a lot of white space you got there, buddy. So we'll say function on mouse down. Log mouse down, yo. Refresh the page. So every time I click down and then I let go, right, then it does a clicked. And that's how a clicked works. A clicked is you have to have a mouse down, then a mouse up over the button. That'll be a click. If you don't do a mouse up, right, see mouse down, but I let go outside, no click, right? But then if I click on it, I get a clicked event. So that's the basic of events. You can do it through JavaScript. You can do it through the DOM. This way is not recommended for building bigger applications. It also works differently on other browsers. And they have this annoying thing where on click is not actually the event. So to give you an example, we'll go back to our other way via JavaScript. My button. Document. The documents. Get element by ID. My button. My button. Then we'll say my button add event listener. On click. Because clear it should match the DOM, right? Refresh the page. No! Right? Really inconsistent, really annoying. So I like that better. Okay? I like using code. Code makes sense. And my markup doesn't have to have code in it. There are other frameworks that actually encourage that, but they get around the scope issues because they're awesome. We have to know, okay, our code has to be last so we can register event. And if we do put it on click, we have to make sure our code is actually loaded because online click might be loaded. Blah, blah. So you can see why I like this actually in code. Okay? So that's the basics of events. That's how you do mouse clicks. That's how you do keyboard events, things like that.